I've got a classic synthesizer to show you today called the Pro One, manufactured by the Sequential Circuits Company in the 80s. This is a cut down version of the Prophet 5 and really sounds a lot like the Mini Moog. I found this one in a landfill while in high school, and ever since I've wanted to build one. Here I've got a panel attached to a circuit I made with KiCad for an earlier Engineer's Day. The circuit is essentially two teensy audio boards with a whole bunch of terminals for panel components and a MIDI shield. As the Pro 1 got me into this engineering mess, I lovingly call this the Proto 8. I'll give a quick demo at the end, but first let's see how the Pro 1 works. The core of this synth is a couple of signal generators called oscillators. They can make combinations of ramp, triangle, and pulse waves. Here, I turn up the amplitude of a single oscillator that is patched into the scope so that you can see the shape of the waves that you are hearing. By combining both oscillators with the mixer, you can hear and see that both waves are summed together, and you can hear the timbre or tone color of both. Frequency of the pitches can be controlled by the knobs here, but it's more useful to drive the frequencies by the key that is being pressed. The Pro One's keyboard has the action of a rusty gate, so I'm using a modern MIDI keyboard and MIDI to CV box, where CV stands for control voltage. For this synthesizer, the control voltage is scaled to one volt per octave. I have the control signal wired to channel two of my scope, which is set to one volt per division. Now when I play keys, you can see that the voltage varies at an octave per division. I'll turn off the drone and show how the amplitude can be modulated per note. When we press a key, we expect sound to come out, and then stop when the key is released. For this, I'll turn the time scale way out. To make the sound more interesting, it can be modulated by something called an envelope, rather than just being gated on and off. The word envelope means container, which applies to the amplitude pattern of the note. With the envelope parameters of attack, decay, sustain, and release, times are set for individual phases of a note. Sharp attacks sound plucky, while slow attacks and long decays are swells. The frequency control voltage can also be made to move slowly or glide between notes, or it can have another signal added to it by the modulator block. This third non-audio oscillator operates at low frequency and is thus called an LFO. When patched into the oscillator's control signals, the pitch sweeps up and down at a frequency of the LFO to produce these alien sounds. An envelope is also provided for general modulation use and for the filter. The modulation signals operate on the same 0 to 10 volt inputs as the volt per octave frequency scale, but it's hard to say what the scaling of the mod depth really is. Now let's put the amplitude envelope back to a really fast attack and decay with an extreme release then use the filter to shape the note instead. When we use the filter cutoff manually, the timbre softens and the wave shape becomes more sinusoidal. Because complex waves are mathematically shown to be combinations of higher frequencies by Fourier, and the filter removes the frequencies above the cutoff point, only the root frequency is left with a very low cutoff setting. By using the envelope to apply the cutoff, the cutoff point moves with time through the note phases just like the amplitude envelope did. The note now swells to reveal the square wave, then pulls back. If we combine all these concepts, an instrumental sound is made. I'll bring in both oscillators, slightly detuned, apply an LFO to a single oscillator's frequency, and maybe play with the resonance of the filter. With a bit of glide in effect, the results are a variable instrument that has some character, which sounds pleasing to me. I've been using the Teensy Audio System to play with the concepts of the old world of modulars. It's a great platform and I highly recommend going over to the PJRC site to get the information from the top level. Also, check out this previous Engineer's Day on how to build a digital handpan using the audio system. My synth is built using mostly custom audio modules because I need to be able to control them in an analog synth-like way. So I use the Proto pedal built up with the Teensy Audio board to do my debugging. Then, I combine the blocks using the graphical user interface that comes with the Teensy Audio platform. This pedal is running a sketch that demonstrates a single oscillator and its modulation ability. The tone can be bent and an LFO applied. The big panel has two of these oscillators in use, as well as some mod sources, a bunch of DC control blocks, and a simple filter. 
With this system, I configure my waves as a mixture of sources, apply them to the oscillators, and set up the oscillator frequencies. These envelopes have eight control points that give nonlinear control to me. The first one is for amplitude, while the second is unassigned. It sounds okay like this, but I do have the modulation working, so I'll apply the other envelope to the filter and add a pitch LFO. After tuning some parameters and adding a bit of glide, again, we're getting something that sounds good and would be a very low cost to deploy as a fixed synthesizer. I hope you've enjoyed these demonstrations today. In the future, I'll be doing some more videos regarding synthesizers, so if there's anything you'd like me to cover, please leave me a comment. Follow the links in the description to see where I'm currently at in the project. And also, you can play with the Arduino libraries that I've created to use these custom modules. Thanks for watching.